Hello, my name is Jake Gamble, and today I'm going to introduce you to Image J and some of the things you can do with it. This is a software used for image analysis where you can take images. Uh, for example, today we're using a grayscale image of particles through an electron microscope. With this software, we can look at uh, properties of the particles, such as the area or size which can be useful and although these skills can be done manually um, it is significantly easier using a software like this so to begin you want to do file and then open and then find where you have your picture and select it So although there are a bunch of different tools, such as magnifying, where you can make the image bigger, and a different angle tools to find, figure out the angle. Uh, so to start, we need to get a scale of the image, as you can see down here. So zoom in on it, and then use this box. And once you start drawing the box, do not let go. So once you get an image around the same size of your scale, you look up at the top where it says X is 205, Y is 248, and W is 141. That is the size in particles of this box. And what we're looking for is the W, which is the width, which is 141. So because, well, some images have the scale on the picture, and some of them like this have it below, we don't want to accidentally think of all of these letters and stuff at the bottom as particles so I have a screenshot of this entire thing without the scale and remember that 141 number so now I open up the screenshotted version um, a lot of these will have the scales on the picture and that is fine because there's something else later on that you can see that will get rid of it so then to start it is relatively simple you choose Analyze at the top. I'm not 100% sure if you can see my bar, but there's the main things we are using is Image, Process, and analyze, analyze. So to start, we're going to set scale. So the distance in pixels we had was 141, which was one micron. And you can use Option M if you're on a Mac to get that symbol. And then boom, you can see at the top that the scale of our image has been changed to what we want. Next is to adjust the threshold. So you go to image, and because this is a, a screenshot and not the actual grayscale image, I need to change from red, green, blue color to an 8-bit. This is just to make sure that the, color, that the picture is in grayscale. When we then go to adjust, and then threshold. So the threshold here is where you can change a lot of your stuff. So bringing it back here makes it a lot more red. If you change the background, it is relatively switched. And the goal is to get the background out. So this big first bump right here is all the background black, with the gray over here being the particles we want. So we want to go just around to the edge of where that starts going up, which we're going to say is about... 113 and then from there click apply and then we have this beautiful black and white image the next thing you want to do to help sort of clean this up a bit is you go to process and then you can look at you go down to binary and you erode it and then again you go to process binary and dilate this sort of cleans up the image a bit so if you have sort of some loose particles around it'll clean those up and make it so just your images are showing the next thing we want to do is to go to analyze and we have set measurements right here so the measurements we're going to be looking at today, oh, and don't forget to close your grayscale, your threshold, so you don't mess anything up. 
So back to the set measurements, we're going to be looking at area, which is what we want to figure out, the perimeter around each one of these, the area fraction, and the ferret diameter. You can redirect those, but that's not important today. So after you press OK, we go to Analyze, Analyze Particles, and 0 to infinity just means so in pixels, anything that's over uh, 0 pixels of color will be selected. So let's say if you still have some leftover junk or small particles, you can change that to pixels and then do 10 to infinity and not count any of those small particles. And for show, um, things like mask is just going to put over a black image just like we have here and count, we'll just count how many they are next to it. Um, and then we're going to choose outlines because that will give us an outline of all of the particles and uh, a number associated with them, which will be easier for future tasks. And then we're going to display the results. The clear result is just going to clear any results you may already have if you've already been doing measurements. Um, excluding on the edges is important because um, if you're looking at area, something like this one up the top is cut short, just like these, so it'll exclude the ones that aren't fully there. Um, press OK. So when something like this happens, it's relatively normal. So one of the main problems is sometimes the file needs to be inverted and then look back at the threshold you chose. We had 0 to about 113. Apply that. And then analyze. Analyze particles. Everything's still the same here. Okay. And it did not work again. So now we will just invert it again. Because sometimes it, it's a lot easier for it to count these black, uh, the white images as the particles and a black background. That's perfectly normal. And then analyze the particles this time. And look at the, what we have here. So if you look at the summary, we can see there are 462 particles with a total area of about 16.678 microns and the average size being 0 0.036 microns. And now more, we can get more data from this. So we can just look at, let's say, particle number 100. We can find 100. This one right he here has an area of about 0.087 microns with a perimeter of 1.159. And then we can see we have all of the other things that we calculated, asked for it to calculate right here. So with this, up at the top, you go to results and then distribution. Um, you can choose automatic bins at the beginning because that will make your life a little bit easier. And then from there you can adjust, but we are going to start with looking at the area because that's pretty much the most important thing and more, most likely thing you will be trying to calculate. And right now it just has 10 bins. And then we can look at around the average size of the area and see how many fall into each individual category. Um, if you wanted to change the amount of bins you have to maybe make it easier to look at, you can turn off automatic bins and let's say make this 50. And then take a look at that has a little bit different of a range and makes it a little bit easier to see um, there are plenty of other things you can do on this software but this is one of the most helpful for looking at different particle sizes because let's just say you were doing it by hand there were 462 of these and we were able to get the area in a much shorter much more convenient time frame.